started at this time. You have your Bibles open to the book of Ephesians chapter 1. And we'll be getting with the last verse there to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 23, where we talk about the fullness of him, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. This is uh, Chief Ellen, Apostle Airbine Intersect, okay, welcoming you today. Okay, as we read the book of Ephesians right here, we're going to see how the Apostle Paul okay, brings out these mysteries regarding the Godhead, concerning God and the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so if you have your highlighter ready, you can make some markings here okay, in your Bible. Okay, so highlight the word God, and over the word God, you can put the word fire. Okay, and over the word Father, you can put the word bosom. And also over Lord Jesus Christ, you can, also, you can put over that the divine word. Okay, the divine word, or the word of God, okay, is that of the, his divine fullness. Okay, because Jesus is the Alpha and Omega, being the divine fullness. And we'll explore more into this, okay, and regarding the work of regeneration, okay, in our fruit bearing, which takes place within us at this present time. Okay, all those that have been sealed or engrafted with the Holy Ghost, as Jesus brings out, <clears throat> where he says, I am the vine and you are the branches. Okay, this is in regarding the fruit bearing. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so she be my disciples. Okay, so we're going to explore more into this pattern. <clears throat> okay, these things which were determined before the foundation of the world. Okay, to the praise of the glory of his grace. Now the praise of the glory again has to do with the crowning factor of all his creation. Okay, is his work within us. Okay, that is the empowerment of this grace. Now grace meaning, okay, the, uh, containing, just like a pie contains certain ingredients. Okay, the grace of God is a power. Okay, and this power, it gives us direction. It sets in order our thinking. Okay, and also accumulates in our knowledge. So wisdom, knowledge, and understanding okay, are the ingredients of grace. Okay, this is the power okay, which affects change within us. Okay, the, this power which affects change within us is also called the anointing. Okay, because the anointing uses this knowledge in order to affect change. That's called the effectual working of the Holy Ghost, which the Apostle Paul brings out here in Ephesians, concerning the effectual working. Okay, effectual has to do with an active or an active power, something that's uh, actively taking place, okay, from the impact of another element. Again, this element is grace. So we see in regarding the fullness of Him. Okay, as we explore more on this, okay, we're going to see in the in the Gospel of John, chapter 17, regarding these mysteries. Okay, and so I'm going to go over to this chart over here, and regarding this mystery. Okay, and point out to you concerning that which the Apostle John brings out about his name okay, and about his uh, glory okay, and also about the, uh, the, his name, his word, and that which is sanctified. Okay, this is the glory of the Lord. Okay, so I'm going to go over here okay, and we're going to talk a little more about this. Okay, concerning this entitlement, the, the authorized sanctified system, okay, that which he has put within us to claim ownership of us. This is the seal. Okay, the word again has to do with which it, uh, in regarding his fullness. Okay, and we can see this in this definition right over here concerning the word of God. Okay, the word is the divine fullness of his entity, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. Okay, those things which he inhabits, okay, and we are in the eye of the Lord. We'll be talking more about that also. Okay, we are completed by his fullness, and you're complete in him, which is head of, which is head of all principality and power. We'll be talking about that also. So we got quite a few things here which we're going to touch on regarding uh, these promises, say, in John chapter 17, where Jesus begins to talk about, and he says, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son, that your son also may glorify you. Okay, the glorification has to do with his joy. Okay, and that joy has to do with this due process. Okay, from the bosom to the bosom. Okay, from the bosom to the bosom. Okay, and that's what we have this right up here. The CS has to do with the crystal sea of the bosom of the Father. 
Okay, the Father manifests in himself a inner dimension which he created for himself, okay, and he manifests himself okay, in the form called God, okay, which would govern our destiny. Okay, and the Word was God. Okay, and this has to do with what he's going to uh, initiate in order to bring about the required results, okay, his joy. Okay, in order to do this, he had to create a dimension within himself. Okay, we're just going to reiterate a few of these things here, which we talked about for the last few weeks. Okay, he had to create a dimension, and when he created a dimension, he created uh, an environment which is less than himself. Okay, and when he created an environment that was less than himself, it was called iniquity. Okay, and being that which is form iniquity, there had to be some kind of resolve in order to, or resolution in, in order to resolve this inequity. And he would do this with himself, called the Word. So in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Okay, this is where the plan of God originated. This is where also the plan of God was initiated. And this is also where the plan of God is being fulfilled and sustained at this present time. The fullness of Him, the Godhead. That's why the knowledge which we, have, which we receive cannot be broken from Him. This is what Jesus says. The Scriptures cannot be broken. You cannot separate the knowledge from its author, and separating the knowledge from the author puts it in a, into a state of inequity. Okay, the spirit will not enter into it. This is what Jesus is also spring, uh, bringing out in the Gospel of John. For the prince of this world comes and has nothing in me. That his spirit cannot enter into this knowledge, and neither can it, uh, it cannot affect change. That's why the wisdom of the world is foolishness with God because it's an enemy of God, it's hostile to God. But again, he says right here, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. And all things will be subjected to the Son, and the Son himself will be subjected back to the Father, and the Father he will receive us back to himself okay, into the crystal sea. Okay, there's two veils which we have to enter, in, enter through, okay, that which is of the water and that which is of fire. So here we can see the elements of water and fire, which, uh, which the Father, okay, in his great wisdom, okay, would use as a token for our redemption. Okay, he created two dimensions, a dimension of the waters. We see this in the book of Genesis, Genesis 1, 1 and 2. Okay, we talks about uh, regarding these things of creation. Okay, and the Spirit of God moved upon the waters. Okay, we can see how uh, the, uh, that which is the Spirit okay, brought, uh, okay, producing a creation within these waters okay, would also create a contradiction okay, for the purpose of testing the will okay, and the state of conscience. So what I'm doing is I'm dropping the bucket in the well and I'm drawing the bucket back up with it with the rope okay, from, from the bosom over here okay, into this dimension of waters, back from the dimension of waters to the fires, okay, back into the bosom of the Father, into the crystal sea. So the Father and the Son, which this has to do with the light and life, okay, of the Alpha and Omega, that's what we call S2, the Son. This Son is giving us knowledge to birth within us, okay, a virtue of his own nature, which is given to the seal. Right now we're partaking of a portion of this seal, okay, because Jesus is our Sabbath and Jesus is our shekel. Right now we're partaking of a portion of the seal, okay, which the Spirit, the anointing, enters into, Okay, allows us to partake of his fullness, okay, the fullness of the Godhead presently. Okay, now let's explore up here a little bit. Okay, uh, <clears throat> everything which God created was less than himself, so we call that a letter. A letter is a, is a letter of a word, okay, a letter of a word. Okay, God put a power with that, and by putting a power with that, he put it within another dimension, which he called Adam. Okay, but Jesus himself, God himself, Okay, provide himself as a vehicle to bring us from this point of the flesh to this point of the glory of God. Okay, of, of the glory. And that's what we're partaking of. So, Father, glorify thy name. We see this in, in the Gospel of John, uh, chapter 17, verse 1. Okay, glorif uh, Father, I glorify your name. And he says, and also he says again, and I will glorify it. <clears throat> all things that you've given me I've kept and none was lost but the son of perdition okay, we also know he brings that out okay, but let's, okay, let's look further into this right here regarding the father okay, that of the crystal sea okay, that, which he is going, uh, that which he is going to put within this dimension from sea to sea from sea to sea okay, 
that which again is going to be the vehicle until everything his enemies be made his footstool, then all will be one. This is what we're going. To be, this is what's going to take place over here. Okay, but let right right now let's go back to Ephesians, okay, uh, chapter one, verse uh, twenty-three, which he says, which is his body, okay, the fullness of him that filleth all and all. It's interesting that he utilizes the word body because he's talking about something that's living and mobile. It's living, mobile, and it has functional parts, okay, for the purpose of its mobility, okay, and the purpose of its mobility. Now, it has to do with an increase of his own house. Okay, so from here, let's go uh, from Ephesians. I'm going to go to John, the Gospel of John here. All right. These words spoke Jesus, John chapter 17. He lifted up his eyes to him and said, Father. What's interesting here, how the Apostle John brings out the word Father, is that you can see how he makes distinctions between the Father and God okay, in his epistles. As he begins in chapter 1, he talks about the Father, and in chapter 2, he also talks about God, okay, because he's talking about a, uh, different manifestations. Okay, that which is born of the bosom, okay, and that which, is being, uh, uh, that which is initiated and being oversought by himself, called God, the governor of our destiny. Okay, and he's God Almighty. Okay, I mean, the reason why he used the word Almighty is because everything is subject to him, all principalities, powers. Let's go on verse 2 here. And he says here, well, in verse 1, The hours come, glorify your son, your son also may glorify you. Now, the word glorify has to, uh, has to do with a form of strengthening. They glorify your son by giving me the strength. They give me the strength for fulfillment. And God also gives us strength, doesn't he? He gives us strength for substance. We see this in Hebrews 11, 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So we see that the elements, yea, the, uh, the, uh, the nine, and the nine elements, five callings and the nine fruits of the Spirit, yea, which has to do with the gifts, the callings, and the graces of God, yea, graces of God are necessary for the substance to be born, and truth, again, defines these elements for us, yea, and also helps us to uh, discern these elements, and also helps us to weigh these elements, yea, as he brings out in the epistle, the apostle John brings out in his epistle in chapter 1. A, uh, or First John, First John chapter two, where it talks about the anointing. Okay, but the anointing which you have received of Him abides in you, and you not, and you need not that any man teach you. Okay? But when He talks about need not any man teach you, He's, he's talking about it's conce uh, concerning the key doctrinal things, okay? the key doctrinal things okay, of the calling. Okay, so you need not any man teach you. It's the same anointing teaches you of all things, which is the work of His charity. But the same anointing teaches you of all things, and His truth and is no lie. Because it doesn't stand within the record of man, but in God. There's truth in those light, and even as it has taught you, the anointing bringing out, bringing out these virtues, even, even so you shall abide in him. Okay, so the word glorify has to do with an assisted ability. Okay, the assisted ability of his grace. Glorify your son with the assisted ability of grace, that your son also may glorify you. Okay, and as to fulfill this plan for your joy. Okay, to fulfill this plan for your joy. Okay, as you have given him power over all flesh. So I like the word power there in verse 2. Okay, the word power again has to do with a new record of knowledge. Okay, and that which is superior to man's logic. A new record of knowledge which is superior to man's uh, uh, wisdom and his logic. This power okay, is going to remove the curse which I put upon the flesh. Now God put the curse upon the flesh. And he only can remove the curse upon the flesh. Okay, and he was going to remove the curse by his own zeal. As it's also written, the zeal, the Lord of hosts, shall perform this. And he himself performed this act in order to remove the curse which he put upon Adam. Okay, and to remove this curse, he had, had to be put upon the cross okay, and the shedding of his blood, okay, which also was going to re, uh, re remove that, okay, which uh, had to do with the, a kingdom, okay, the kingdom of Satan. He's going to remove... Adam out of the kingdom of Satan and remove Adam, uh, Satan's powers out of the soul of Adam. And we'll go on, we'll, we'll talk more about that also. As you have given him power over all flesh, right, to remove the curse, that he should give eternal life. I might want to highlight the word eternal life there. Okay, now the, the eternal life has to do with uh, 
of that which is beyond that which is of restrictive nature, isn't it? Because it's eternal and perpetual. Okay, and this is uh, uh, that he should give eternal life or perpetual life. The perpetual life will be within this power, which I'm going to use to remove the curse and put Adam into a new house or a new shell, okay, into a new kingdom, a new and different kingdom, okay, which, which, whose brightness will never fade and whose increase will never fail, and you'll never suffer loss because he's going to remove the power of death. Okay, he's going to remove the power of death first in the, uh, philosophically, and he's going to remove the power of death secondly okay, uh, and regarding the, the fruits of that false knowledge. He, by birthing his image within us, his image and likeness within us, his virtue within us, it carries his likeness, it carries his power, it carries his perception. He, it will bring us into the reality of the promises, those things which we have hoped for. He, and this is what faith does. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. He, though we're not entering into the reality of that promise yet, Yet he is giving us tokens of substance in this present time okay, as a witness okay, of this progression okay, and a seal of that promise okay, that we're not believing in a lie. Okay, we're not believing or putting our hope okay, in, the, okay, in a shadow of one's imagination. We're not putting our hope in imagination or the shadows of man. Okay, we're putting, but we're putting our hope okay, within the throne and the light of God, okay, which will not lie. For I am the Lord, I lie not. Okay, his own uh, his own record okay, is a standard of all things and the oath of all living and all creation. Okay, and we live by his word. Okay, our life is by his fullness, okay, which we're drinking of right now. His life, our life, is of his fullness, okay, which we're drinking of him. Okay, now in contrast to that, okay, in contradiction of his fullness and of his cup, we can see something that's, uh, that has been ever present since the fall of man. Okay? And that spirit of Antichrist, which existed from, since the beginning, okay, is still prevalent today. Okay? And being prevalent today has counterfeited everything. And regarding the, uh, the likeness of God, okay, it counterfeited its likeness by providing uh, a mannequin. Okay? Satan's mannequin is lifeless knowledge. Okay? It looks like God, but it's lifeless knowledge. Okay? It doesn't possess any kind of force okay, of the God code. It doesn't, it, it doesn't uh, it cannot bring about okay, any reality within your life, but what it does, it can flatter the imagination. It's called an idol. Okay, the, when the knowledge of this world is an idol, it flatters the imagination, okay, but it doesn't produce substance because the anointing will not enter into false knowledge, as, we, as I brought out earlier. The prince of this world comes as nothing in me. Okay, what he initiates cannot, uh, cannot sustain the life within the soul. I only can produce life in a soul. And we know that. That's why the Antichrist, though he has his own healing ministry, cannot raise the dead okay, because there's no life within him. Okay, there's no life within his record. There's no life within his knowledge. But he's going to have a healing ministry okay, during the time of the tribulation, healing and miracle ministry. And one of the prophets said, by this you shall know, that this is the uh, this is the man of sin, the lawless one, because he will not be able to raise the dead. So we see that the cup which which the uh, the prince of this world or the mother of harlots gives, okay, is full of the abominations of God. In other words, is philosophically mixed with all kinds of perceptions, okay, which the princes, the Satan's thirteen princes, provided richly, okay, for the imagination of man to continually walk contrary to God and to bring upon himself the wrath of God. So we can see this in the book of Revelation. I'm turning over there right now, Revelation 17. Okay, in Revelation 17, we can see that the, um, that the inhabitants of the world at a point of time are gonna wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. Now we see this in 17.8. Now the beast which you saw was and is not, okay, which is a watcher, he shall sin out of the bottomless pit. Of course, we're not talking about Revelation right now, but I'm reading this, but I'm not going to expound on this. And I'm going to, and, and go into perdition here. Uh, that is uh, uh, at the conclusion okay, of the seven-year tribulation. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world okay, when they behold the beast, the false messiah, okay, and the vehicle which he's using. Now, he's using himself 
as a vehicle or a record of man, which is a lie. Jesus is a vehicle and record of God, which is truth. So we can see the counterfeit, okay, which the Antichrist okay, provided ever since the beginning, when man wanted to explore beyond the restrictions which God set upon him, which Adam wanted to do, okay, becoming a God. Okay, he wanted to be okay, as the Almighty God, okay, but yet the Father put him within a restricted form and we all feel the agitation and frustration within ourselves to explore beyond what we are okay, in order to access more knowledge to feed the God code okay, for the purpose of expanding and increasing okay, the, uh, the, uh, the, the soul, okay, the soul which we are, okay, that it would, would expand that okay, beyond its present perimeters. Okay, and as our soul, like a drop of water, okay, can, uh, can contain okay, everything of the universe, Okay, yet it's under a form of restriction right now, okay, just to work with this knowledge. So let's go back here in, in verse, uh, verse 8, Revelation 17, 8. It talks about these things, whose names are not written in a book of life in the foundation of the world. So we can see that that which we're presenting in the second, eighth week at this present time, okay, is going to be preached by the two witnesses and also going to be, uh, uh, um, say, explored, okay, by those Okay, of the seventh week during the time of the tribulation. They're going to wonder about what knowledge was the original knowledge okay, and why and how is it that we were so deceived. Okay, and uh, that's because when, it, when they were beholding the beast, okay, the beast was pretending to be the Lamb of God. And this is what we see in Revelation. I saw a lamb which had two horns and he spoke as a dragon. Okay, so we can see the, uh, uh, the, the assimilated likenesses of the outward, okay, but yet at the same time, the the uh, the false charity or the defiled or corrupt charity is coming through him. And it's the same thing in a false religious system today, okay. False charity or the corruption of knowledge, okay, is spewing out, okay, through the lips of the sinner and the unrighteous and the ungodly, okay. Those which do not bear the likeness of God will continue will continually to spew out, okay, the uh, the rubbish or the corruption, okay, of the things of God. And this is what he says, and out of his mouth came a flood. Okay, and the purpose of the flood, okay, this false knowledge was to overthrow. Okay, and uh, and uh, to overthrow okay, th those which hear. All right, now let's go to back to, uh, to the Gospel of John here. And by the way, that was in chapter 13. Okay, about the, uh, the dragon. Or, or actually chapter 12. The serpent cast out of his mouth waters a flood. So we can see that his charity was destructive. Okay, it did not drop as the dew upon the tender grass. Okay, but it rather came as famine, okay, or as a flood. It was completely too, okay, um, it was a uh, geographically or topographically reconstruction, okay, of the image of the earth. And we can see that this is what's happened through the curses, the curses which God put. The curse which came upon the serpent, okay, came upon also the earth. Okay, which man was taken from. Okay, and the curse which came upon the earth okay, uh, reconstructed the, top, uh, top, the uh, topography okay, of, the, of the earth, okay, how the continents were divided. Okay, now we see there in the book of Revelation that the continents will come back together again. And when they come back together again, okay, we'll behold the image of the face of Christ within that. But as long as the continents are in the state of their separation, Okay, the, the, uh, the rivers would turn to blood, the oceans would turn to blood, okay, the, the earth would be charred, okay, and there'd be pockmarks, okay, huge pockmarks in it, okay, which, would, which would look like laceration marks okay, within the face of Jesus. But let's go to John chapter 17 here. Everybody should be there now. Okay, you have given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. Now we have to explore a little further what that means, as many as you have given him. Okay, and that has to do with that which took place over here, okay, on this on this side. As many as you have given him, okay, those things which took place, okay, within the Father's bosom, okay, and we call those the consenters. The consenters were stood in agreement with this plan of God, okay, to come into a dimension which be less than Himself, in order to be tested to come back with His with His fullness, okay, and by um, and by coming back with His fullness will enter into the, the eternal inheritance. 
Okay, these are the houses of the righteous. Okay, these are the houses of righteous, which I put up here the letter. This is where the holy city New Jerusalem is at. Okay. Now this dimension is going to overlay this dimension after this dimension has been cleansed by fire. Okay, first by water, as in the days of Noah, then by fire, as the Apostle Peter brings out. Okay, we're in, uh, in the new heavens, new earth, which should be purged by fire or cleansed by fire. Okay, wherein dwells righteousness. This is the enemy, and his enemy be made his footstool. Anything that's less than a father is called an enemy, or as his footstool. Okay, and it'll be everything in this dimension will come into service to him. Okay, right now, okay, the, the 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 defiled conscience is a disservice to the kingdom of God. The defiled conscience is a disservice. Okay, but the pure conscience, which will see God, we serve him by his powers. Okay, and that's why we're called the sons of God. Okay, as the Apostle John brings out, Beloved, now are you the sons of God. Okay, we see this in 1 John chapter 3. Beloved, now are you the sons of God. It does not yet appear we shall be, okay, because in, this is the future yet. Okay, because we know that when he shall come, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Okay, this is his footstool. This is his throne. His throne will dominate this, and everything in this dimension will come in service to him. Okay, within his throne. That's why the holy city is in this dimension, will come down into this dimension. To establish a new uh, new point of contact, okay, and also a reference point, okay, for other dimensions, okay, which we enter into. Now, this is what Jesus was talking about. Those which you have given me on this side, okay, when they came into the body on this side, the concentra, which is over here, complied over here. He accepted these terms. So, all those which you have given me, I have kept. All those which you have given me, see where I'm pointing. All those which you have given me here, I have kept. The consenters complied. They, they accepted okay, my counsel. They accepted me as the word of God. All those that you give me, I kept. No one is lost but the protester, which, was, which has to do with Judas Iscariot. Judas Iscariot, which is a, which is a loud protester over here, I, I gave him the bag. I kept him close to me. Okay? But yet, he continually leaned to Satan's counsel. As he leaned to Satan's counsel over here, okay, of course, Satan wasn't Satan yet. Okay, but as he stood, but as he stood in protest to the challenges which I promised, and the new commandments which I which I would give. Remember, where there's no law, there's no sin. There was no sin over here. Okay, everything was in a state of innocence. Okay, now follow my thinking here. Everything was in a state of innocence. Okay, but once it was put into this dimension over here, it became contaminated. Okay, losing its innocence, okay, it became ignorant okay of their first consul this is the first consul okay which which uh, which was given by the word into this dimension dimension over here okay which is in the father's bosom because god is light and in him is no darkness at all okay so god put a put put a dimension and a layer over here okay where he could communicate okay here we can see that the protesters okay, would not consent to this plan, but they had no choices in it. This is why God put all his, all the souls into a deep trance, brought them to this dimension, set them within, and then it brought them from, from this dimension, put them in bodies in this dimension, okay, in order, in order to bring to pass that which he promised over here. Okay, the protester and consenter, okay, would have the same access, the same knowledge, okay, for the choices now. They had the same access, same knowledge over here but there was no sin yet because the father had not yet set a standard. Now the father put us in a dimension which is less than himself to put a standard to it okay, and a scale of discernment okay, and a policy to follow, judgments to observe, testimonies to hear, a law to keep, the law of grace, a law to keep. Okay, and also to show that and being in a dimension of, of things of, of, of a temporary nature, we would have to be uh, consistent we have to be consistent whereas over here there wasn't necessary to be consistent you had uh, you're an eternal state but over here you're in a temporal state which means consistency is necessary in order for you to survive okay the same thing observing seasons and times in order to survive you have to order the seasons of sowing the seasons of reaping because God put time in this dimension where in here there was no time now there's time over here there was no challenge. Now there's a challenge over here. 
There was no law. Now there's a law. Okay? <clears throat> and this commandment, which you had from the beginning, to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, love your neighbor as yourself, so that there be no dissension, no schism, okay? and uh, no oppression. Okay? So this is the enemy, which should be made his footstool. Okay? The throne will rule over all, and all over here will be in service to him. Okay? <clears throat> so this is, we come back here to verse... Uh, uh, verse 2. Now we're still in John chapter 17, verse 2. You have given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. That's what we talked about over here. Given him where? Over here. Okay. Uh, and this is life eternal. Okay. It was, this is the, a, a, uh, a perpetual, uh, this substance is perpetual. This knowledge is perpetual, which I'm providing for them, okay, which is unrestrictive. Uh, to as many as you have given him, and this is life eternal, that they might know you, and we come to over word, know here, know you, the only true God, okay, the true God, which means there's a false God. Okay, a false God. If there's a true God, there's a false God. The true God is of the fire. The false God is of the waters. Okay, and that is Satan. Because the Father, okay, or God and Father, cast him out of this dimension of the fires, cast him down here into the lowest of the uh, lowest of dimensions, over the abyss. Okay, or the abyss, or the bottomless, it was called the bottomless here. Okay. <clears throat> okay, or the bottomless in the eye of God. Okay, this is called an eye, that's why I put the word eye there. Okay, the eyes of the Lord over the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. This is as an eye of the Lord. He sees all things, knows all things. Okay, that take place in here because we're in him. All right, so he cast them out over the bottomless. Now let's go back here. Now the word no, Okay, which we come back over, up over here, okay, concerning the knowing him. Now we're going to go back up over here to the, and see this chart okay, in the Gospel of John here. The knowing has to do with the, the, uh, that which is uh, the, uh, the spirit and the truth. Okay, the spirit and the truth, to know him. Okay, the witness and the record come together. The witness and the record. The witness is from above. The record is from beneath. Okay, Christ rose from the dead. The witness from above. Okay, and the uh, <clears throat> Christ and the record from beneath. Okay, his spirit and truth, we know him through this witness and by this vessel. Now the woman, and we see in the book of Revelation, the woman r rode upon a scarlet colored beast. Okay, now that scarlet colored beast was the vehicle which, this, which the knowledge of this world was using okay, to keep them in a state of perdition. Okay, he has seven heads and ten horns. Okay, seven heads and ten horns. Okay. okay, on the beast. Now the beast is a vehicle of many different philosophies. Okay, and the vehicle, this is why I put the word vessel here. Okay, not, this is the true vessel. Remember he says the true God. Okay, that which is consistent to the uh, pattern, that which is consistent to his character, that which is consistent to his plan. Okay, those, that is truth. Consistent with his character, purpose, and plan. Okay, the true vessel, the true God. Okay, now the, so the false vessel is that which the false religious system is writing on right now. Okay, the false vessel, okay, which will not lead them into the Father's bosom, okay, but will lead them to perdition. Okay, it'll lead them to the perdition, and this is what I have right here. Okay, the world, the perdition, the darkness is the enemies. It will lead them to perdition. Now, on the beast, which on the woman sets, okay, will hate the woman, okay, and because she's only using the beast as a vehicle. Okay, but, uh, but the beast no longer need her, okay, because it will provide, again, okay, its own laws and philosophies through, the, through, that which of it, through that of himself when he comes as the false messiah. Okay, this is the perdition. Uh, and the, all the ungodly, those which do not bear the image and likeness of God, those which are fruitless and regarding the, uh, the, the work of his regeneration, those which are absent the anointing, called ungodly, the wicked, the sinner, okay, those which are also mischievous, Okay, and the uh, irreligious okay, have their perdition here. Okay, the perdition of derision and being confounded okay, as well as also being uh, absent of any virtue. This is their destruction over here because the beast that, you write, that they're writing on is absent of virtue. Okay, it has a knowledge form but a false knowledge. Okay, so let's go back here just for a moment. Gospel of John. The name again has to be authorized sanctified system Okay, which, which we now have within us. Okay. 
okay, it's an ark of ownership. Okay, the seal of God is in our forehead, okay, which has to do with a perception of new ownership. Okay, we're in a different house now. The word, government, truth, and spirit. Okay, the word, okay, which he brings out, again, has to do with identifying the, full, the divine fullness of his entity. The word, okay, word, divine fullness of his entity. Okay, we are, we are complete in him by his fullness. We are complete in him. Okay, our faith is complete and our charity is sanctified. Our charity is sanctified. Okay, now we come to the next word, sanctified. This is where the Father separates us from the world to himself through this process of knowing him. And, this is, and here is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit. By this we know him. Okay, now the word knowing, which means we're able to identify our Father's face. Okay, we can see him. We can see him. This is what Jesus was telling his apostles. Okay, as, and regarding how he can come, he'll be present within this world, but the world will not see him, but we'll see him. Okay, so this is the witnesses from above is to, to, to be able to identify okay, the, um, you see, the, um, the, vi the, the visage okay, of, uh, of the invisible God. We identify the visage of the invisible God okay, in the charity of the righteous. The visage of the invisible God is in the cherry of the righteous, that's knowing him. Okay. Okay, so let's go back over here. Okay. The, uh, of how we know him. So they asked him, it says, how is it you will manifest yourself to us, not the world? Okay, so let's uh, we'll explore that here just in John chapter 14. And he talks about that. He talks about this concerning the spirit of truth. Okay, when Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and life. And remember, we're talking about the true God in John chapter 17, but I'm John chapter 14 now. Okay, if you had known me, you've, you should have known my Father also. That's in verse 7, uh, verse seven here, John 14, 7. If you had known me, by, uh, that is by the witness, by the witness of this knowledge, you'd be, be able to hold the visage of the Father in this knowledge. Okay, and that's what he brings out here, the word Father. Okay, the Father, that is of the invisible and that which is of his bosom. Okay, because I came out from my Father. This is what Jesus says. I came out from God and come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go into my Father. Now we see that in John chapter 16, verse 28, if you just want to make a note on that. Okay, for the Father himself loves you because you have loved me. Okay, you have accepted the knowledge and you reciprocated this knowledge. Okay, you responded to grace by faith. Okay, and this pleases my Father. Okay, we, because we know that without faith it's impossible to please him. For he that comes to God, which means you have to have knowledge to find the altar, must believe that he is, okay, and regarding this plan being the true record, okay, and regarding that he is God, okay, and that is for, for the purpose of identifying. For he, that, for he that comes to God must believe that he is and is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him and is rewarding us with these tokens of knowledge, these tokens of his grace. For the Father himself loves you because you have loved me, and I believe that I came out from God. Okay, so just for a second there, I came out from God. Now Jesus is the captain of our salvation. Okay, Jesus talks about a place of many mansions. Okay, he talks about the many mansions. He talks about us concerning going back to his Father. I came forth from the Father and am coming to the world. Okay, now I'm gonna point up here again. Okay, I'm gonna, I came out from God. This is God, the fire. And then come into the world. Notice he says the word Father, God, and then come into the world. The world, a system of ignorance. Okay, and again, I'm leaving, I'm leaving knowledge here. I came out from God, I came out from the Father, and then come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. From the low from lowest from low lowness and humbleness to greatness and to glory. From suffering, from suffering to glory. Okay, B equals B. From the bosom to the bosom, from the place of our, or see, of, of where the word originated, and where the and where the challenge was given, is now being we're complying to this challenge, which was brought forth here, a commandment from the beginning. Okay, and this is what the apostle John brings out in First Epistle one one. All right, we're talking about in the that which was in the beginning, which we have heard, that which is in the beginning which we have heard, which you have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, our hands have handled the word of life. The word of life he awakened the state of our conscience. 
by, the, by those words which he spoke to us it awakened that we, re, we responded to that we received that <clears throat> we accepted his yoke this is what he said learn of me learn of me okay? for I'm meek and lowly in heart and you shall find rest unto your souls in this dimension you will not find rest except by my word okay which of course by my words uh, my word will bring it, it will uh, bring equity within your heart you will find rest by faith okay let's go back to the epistle here okay in John chapter 14 okay this is what Jesus was speaking to Peter uh, to Philip okay if you had known me you should have known my father also you have seen this witness understand this from henceforth he's telling Philip here because that is because of my record okay you will see his face okay and from henceforth you know him and seen him now look what Philip says in John 14, 8. Make a note on that one. Now Philip replied, and he says, Lord, show us the Father, and it suffice us. Now, why would he make those distinctions? Lord, show us the Father, and it suffice us. Okay? And I go back up here. You're inside the Father. I'm a photograph of him. You're inside the Father. As a baby is inside the womb, can't see the face of his mother yet until he's outside the until he comes outside of the womb. He says, I, right now, I am, we are inside of our Father. Being inside the Father, I am a photograph of who He is. This photograph is the knowledge which I'm giving to you. All right, and it goes on here. We're still talking about the word no. All right, Philip, he's, Philip said, My Lord, show us the Father, and it suffices. And Jesus said unto him, verse 9, Have I been so long time with you? And yet have you not known me, Philip? He that sees me has seen the Father. I'm the photograph of who He is. Nay, how say you then show us the Father? Verse 10, believe you not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? Okay, well now we have that same engrafting okay, because we're drinking of him right now. That's what Jesus says, drink of me. Uh, he, that, uh, he that is thirst, come unto me and drink, Jesus said. And that's what we're doing because Jesus is the Father in the form of, uh, of Jesus. Okay? And he's giving us to drink okay, the water of the Spirit, which is of the crystal sea. Okay, the Spirit is life. And that which, when we say the word crystal sea, we're not talking about uh, a flowing, outflowing of H2O, water. Okay, when we're talking about the crystal sea, we're talking about the very essence of the spirit of who he is. He's the living one. Okay, we're talking about that which is the, of the, where all life sprang from. All life sprang from him, the Father, known as now the Holy Ghost. Okay, the Father and the Holy Ghost are one. Okay, and this is what, the Apostle John understood this. And he says there are three that bear record in heaven. First John chapter 5. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Okay. When he says the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, he's talking about as the crystal sea. This is what we're drinking of. Philip, I've been giving you I've been giving you water out of my cup ever since I've been down here. And haven't you yet tasted of the Father? Okay, that which I'm speaking to you is life and spirit. Okay. And that's why he asked me to show us the Father. Believe you not that I'm in the Father, okay? and that has to do with this whole thing here, and the Father in me. We're being engrafted because we're drinking of him. Believe you not that I'm in the Father and the Father in me. The words that I speak, okay, now we go back to the word words there. We're talking about words, we're talking about a form of packaging knowledge, and this knowledge is in a package of truth, okay? Because truth are facts which are consistent with God's character, his purpose, and his plan. And this truth in its form of package, the Spirit will enter into the package and give it life, and that's called charity. Okay? So what you hear in this charity becomes truth in the foundation, and from the truth of the foundation through the lips, you speak charity, and by this you are saved. That is, if you hear with your ear, believe in your heart, and speak with your mouth, you shall be saved. This is what Paul brings out in Romans, okay, concerning uh, if you believe in your heart that God, uh, the Lord Jesus and that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And it's concerning the confession of your mouth. Okay, so believing in the heart, confession with the mouth. The hearing of, the, the hearing of charity, which then morphs into a form of truth, if you will. Morphs, which means it goes from form to form okay, upon the recipient. Okay, you're, the re, you're the recipient of my truth, of this truth, of this knowledge, and upon hearing this, Okay, it takes the form, okay, the charity which I speak takes the form of truth within your foundation. And the Spirit now uh, see, nourishes that. And from that harvest, 
a percentage of that, as we know in part, and we prophesy in part, becomes your charity. Okay, it becomes your charity. You know in part, and you prophesy in part. Okay, <clears throat> now let's go back to John. Okay, in John chapter uh, 14. Leave you not that I'm in the Father, and the Father in me. The words that I speak, that's your charity there, I speak not of myself, nor of my aspiration. That's what it means. The things, the things I'm speaking to you is not of the aspiration of the flesh, of man, nor the wisdom of the world, nor the driving force of the kingdom of darkness. Okay, the God code of iniquity is the kingdom of darkness, isn't it? That driving force. Okay, in order to consume upon corruption. Okay, but the driving force within us, which is the God code of righteousness. Okay, that driving force is to consume all things of his kingdom. Okay, for the purpose of giving. Okay, we consume to give, okay, by the other, but the system of the world consumes to steal. And this is what Satan did. Everything that God gave to Satan, Satanel, he stole it okay, and redirected it into the aspiration. So he was called the father of iniquity. Okay, but everything which our father provides for us through our Lord Jesus Christ, okay, the consumption of it is for the purpose of the sowing of it. Okay, and the sowing okay, will, will reach unto the, uh, the time of the harvesting. Okay, and when it reaches the time of harvesting, okay, it continually overflows. That's what he's talking about. Okay, that the, the time of, that, the, that the sowing shall reach into the time of harvesting, which has to do with the overflow of charity. Okay, it's boundless. It's boundless. It's perpetual. It's unending. Okay, all right. Now the, speak, the words I speak, I speak not of myself, my aspiration, the driving force of iniquity, but the Father that dwells in me, he does the works. That means he's the one that's giving witness to this. Okay, remember when I was speaking to you, Peter, this is what Jesus was saying. Remember when I was speaking to Peter, Peter reciprocated in a way that I acknowledged, which was uh, a, a, the direct the involvement okay, of, the, okay, of my father. Okay, it was a direct involvement of my father, okay, that there was an opening of an understanding and there's a reciprocation of that, uh, of that enlightenment. Okay, this is what he's talking about, the, the witness, the giving witness Okay, uh, the, to the words of my record. Believe me that I'm in the Father and the Father me, or else believe me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Okay, that has to do with not the works concerning okay, the physical labor, okay, but the works and regarding of what uh, the, that which is being constructed within my record. Okay, that which is being constructed within my record is what you're going to be laboring with, Philip, okay, and all the other apostles, which will which which I give to you, you'll be given to others, the community, the community of the righteous. All right? But then he asked him an interesting question, okay, and regarding how is it you're going to manifest to us and not into the world, okay, in verse 19. Yet a little while and you, the world sees me no more, but you see me because I live, you shall live also. At the day you shall know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. Okay, at the day you shall know, because the Spirit will enter into this knowledge okay, and the work of regeneration will begin because your conscience now has been awakened, okay, and is pure before me. Faith purifies the conscience. Okay, as the Apostle Paul brings out, unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are filed and unbelieving is nothing pure. Okay, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. Okay, that's why okay, in that state of impurity that their ears are clogged the hearing of the words of this grace. Now, back to John chapter 17, and we're still talking about his fullness. Okay, and as we're talking about his fullness, we're talking about it's concerning returning to the place of our beginning. Okay, we're, this is our true memorial. Jesus Christ is our true memorial. He is our true testimony. Okay, because he's our heritage and he's our her inheritance. He's our heritage and it's concerning establishing a memorial within us called Sons of God. And he is in our inheritance as we partake with him, with the Father. Okay, as we partake of him in his throne. That's part of our rewards. Revelations chapter 4. Okay, or actually chapter 3, and uh, uh, last verse of chapter 3, Revelations chapter 3, and in chapter 4, we can see, is that he that overcomes, or I grant to sit with me in my throne. Okay, with me in my throne. And this we go right back up to here again. He that overcomes, or I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and I sat down. Overcame where? In this, because uh, I established a record in myself. This is the works that you must believe. As I overcame and set down my father in his throne, because the, I am the key of the door of the throne, which will enter into the crystal sea, which you have to believe in. Okay? In order to enter into this, you must have the white stone, because that white stone is going to be your key for the purpose, like a garage door opener, 
for the, for the purpose of entering into the other dimensions, okay, as a key to the door of the throne and to the, and, and to the Father's bosom and, and to okay, spawn in the crystal sea. Okay, I've got a few minutes here. Okay, um, and you can get your sacrifices ready. All right, let's go on here. Uh, so this is, uh, this whole process is called eternal life. The whole process from the bosom to the bosom is called eternal life because it's per, it is perpetual and what he's doing within us. All right, and then he says it's life eternal, that they may know you. Remember I, I pointed that out over here. That they, that I, that they may, that, uh, that they may know you, the only true God, and that's what we're talking about here, okay, which has to do with the original. You are the original scale. You are our original history. You are the original memorial, and you are inheritance. Okay, as we're going, you're going to inherit. We're going to inherit God, and this is what Jesus was bringing out, okay, or the Apostle Paul was bringing out, as heirs of God and joint heirs of Christ. Heirs of God and joint heirs of Christ. We turn back over here. We're talking about that heirs of God, which means we'll be we'll be establishing thrones in other dimensions, and joint heirs of Christ, okay? which means He's going to assist us. Okay? He's as a as the Comforter or the Paraclete or Comforter. He is going to continue to assist us within this propagation of mating in other dimensions, okay? to continue to uh, birth His right uh, likeness and righteousness in all dimensions forever. And so this is life eternal, eternal life and life eternal. Okay, eternal life which has to do with the journey which we're in. Okay, it's perpetual. Okay, and this is life eternal. Okay, concerning the processes of this, okay, will be perpetual okay, within his knowledge <clears throat> because you, you have his seal in your forehead. The seal of the forehead is with a new perception is being molded within you because he's inscribing in your mind and your heart a new commandment. Okay, not that of the commandment of the letter of the flesh, okay, which has to do with that of that first covenant of Moses, where they had to be instructed, every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, because the knowledge was only within the tokens of earthly things. They had to be, they had to be instructed okay, according to the earthly instruction. Okay? Uh, and, and regarding the, uh, the generations of Levi, he had to be instructed by the previous generation regarding their responsibilities, regarding the altar, sacrifices they, and all the other duties which were imposed upon them by Moses' law, that pattern. They, so they shall not teach every man his brother and every man his neighbor saying, know the Lord by Moses, but they shall all know me from the least to the greatest by my seal okay, and through the instruction of my stewards. Okay, <clears throat> they will now be able to build and function at a different altar and build up one house, okay, my temple the temple of, of God by the Spirit. This is life eternal, that they might know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent to be this record. Now look at verse four, okay, in John chapter 17, verse four. Okay, I have glorified you on the earth. How did I do that? As Jesus, I'm just putting that in the third person there. I have glorified in the earth, which means, uh, I have, I have done those things which are required of in order for this joy to be full. Okay, in order for our joy to be full. <clears throat> I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you gave me to do, providing the record. And now, O Father, look at verse 5. And now, O Father, notice he says the word Father there. <clears throat> right, he's going back to that, uh, to that of the bosom. Okay. This is where it all originated, right here in the bosom. <clears throat> And now, O Father, okay, uh, that is of the bosom, okay, glorify your Son. That means bring me now from the lowness to the place of, uh, the, place of okay, the origin of all these things. And this is what we're going to be doing. Jesus, being the captain of our salvation, is showing, is showing us the stages and due process okay, of, the different, okay, of, of the, you see, the different processes of this, okay, from the lowness to greatness and from suffering to glory. That's why if we suffer with him, we shall also reign with him. So the processes of the suffering has to do with denial okay, of the, the driving force of the aspiration okay, to the acceptance of that which is of the grace, the grace of God. <clears throat> with me, uh, with your own self, 
with your own self, I'll get ready to highlight this now, with your own self, okay, that has to do with a, uh, okay, a domain, domain, your own self, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. So make sure you highlight that, before the world was. From the bosom to the bosom, okay, the, the journey, the vehicle, the vessel, is our Lord Jesus Christ, our mediator, who, is, who in this vessel is like a ship on the ocean. Okay? It's navigating us through life. Okay? It's going to navigate us through the different dimensions, okay? into, uh, right through the, the port, okay? the port okay? or the, the door of the throne, and allow us the haven in our, in our eternal rest okay? in the Father's bosom again. That's why I put the keyhole right there. Okay? That's why Jesus is also the key. He is the will and power of God. <clears throat> Before the world was. Okay, I have manifested your name. Now we come back to the, uh, we're going back to these particular words again, aren't we? As we see the word name, okay, the word known, the word sanctify, and the word joy. <clears throat> okay, and we'll see the word joy there in verse 13. And now come I to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. There's the word joy there. Okay, the joy has to do with, uh, they, of the, the completion of our redemption okay, will be fully realized okay, when we enter into that next week, the final, the final week of the 10th week okay, of, the, 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 of the Enoch and um, uh, time, uh, timeline. Enoch and timeline. Okay, I've manifested your name. Now look at verse 6 there. I'm still talking about the fullness of God, okay, which we're still talking about the Word. Okay, the divine fullness of divinity we're complete in. This is his joy. I manifested your name unto the men which you gave me out of the world. There he says it again. Out of the world? You gave me these men out of the world? Okay, well let's go back and look at that. That which was you gave me here was already determined here. Out of the world. Okay, they, they consented. They conformed. They consented they conformed. And by conforming, I have sanctified them. I sanctified them with new knowledge. Even though they were born into these dark waters, being the lowest of the heavens and the darkest of the heavens, Satan being the principalities of the air, influencing the minds of the children of disobedience, called the children of wrath, they, they, have, not, they, they have not stood with the protesters, okay, as we see in Psalms 1. <clears throat> They have not stood okay, in the congregation of the wicked. They have stood in my word. I manifested your name unto the men which you gave me out of the world. Yours they were. Yours they were. And you gave them me. Over here. <clears throat> okay, by this chart up here, we can understand more of what, what was it Jesus relating to when he was speaking to the Father. What was he reflecting upon for his faith? This is what he's reflecting upon for his faith. Okay, because that which that which was shall be. Okay, that which was shall be. Okay, that which is in the bosom shall be completed in the bosom. We see in the book of Ecclesiastes. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> uh, I have manifested your name. Now again, a name has to do with that which is the authorized sanctified system. Okay, the stamp and, and seal of ownership now is in their hearts because they accepted this knowledge. They consented, conformed to this knowledge. Conformity, we talked about conformity. I manifested your name unto the men which you gave me out of the world. Yours they were, here. And you gave them me, here. And they have kept your word. Huh? Right there it is. They accepted the fullness, they accepted the terms. <clears throat> They, they accepted the terms for this testing. They accepted them here, and upon and after they awakened them over here, they accepted them over here too. Okay? I'm giving them all a chance. Now they have known, they, by the crown of this grace, that all things whatsoever you have given me are of you. All things. They remembered. All right, there was a recall. They have remembered all things that you have given me and my father's bosom are of you. I told them over here, okay, are of you. I have given unto them the words which you gave me. <clears throat> you gave me here, 
I gave them here. I've given them the words that you gave me, and they have received them. They consented to conform. They consented, conformed. Okay, now they're communicating this in the preaching. They have received them, and they have known surely that I came out from you, from here to here. What a journey. What a mystery. Okay, a mystery concerning God and the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, and we are, <clears throat> we are here presently, but this is where we're going to be in the future, in your future. Surely I came out from you, and they have believed that you did send me. Okay, that is they accepted the testimony of my stewardship of this dimension for the remission of their sins. I pray for them. Now look at verse nine. Okay, now that I've come in, I've come into this dimension. Okay, where we there is a, there is an established performance. Okay, a petition that must be made, which will not take place over here. Okay, this is what the prophets talk about. Okay, that when we're in this dimension right here, and Jesus also spoke about that, the time will come when you will not have to ask me anymore. That's over here. But over here, in this dimension, it's necessary in order to provide a form of communication, a tethering. This communication okay, is keeping this tethering, or this line live. Okay, it's keeping this line live. <clears throat> I pray for them. That's for the remission now. Okay, I pray not for the world. That means because of their sins, their sins are still retained. I don't pray for them, say, that are, that, that are over here. But I pray for them that consented. Okay, but for them which you have given me over here. Okay, for they are yours. Okay, and it's by this knowledge now, <clears throat> this knowledge which is in my name of ownership. They are yours. They have accepted the terms. They're gonna, they have overcome. They have overcome a lot of contradiction. Okay, so therefore the prize is theirs, as I promised them in, the, in your bosom, Father. All mine are yours and yours are mine. There's that exchange again. <clears throat> okay, it's concerning the equality of the inheritance. Okay, the equality of the inheritance. And I, am, and I am glorified in them. I'm glorified in them. Because that which was promised over here, okay, I have made known over here, they accepted it, and now it's taking root within them. I, have glorified, uh, I am glorified in them because I brought them from this stage to the next stage. I brought them from the, the, the knowledge of the beast okay, into knowledge of the upright. Okay, from the four-footed beast to the knowledge of the upright. <clears throat> in verse 11, and now I'm no more in this world. I'm no more in the world, but these are in the world and I come to you. Look what he's gonna say here. I'm gonna come to you again because I'm going to make the journey for them. Okay, I'm, I'm going to be the, the, the trailblazer. Okay, I'm, gonna, <clears throat> I'm going to lay, uh, I'll lay open the road and the lanes okay, for them to proceed by knowledge. Holy Father, now here he goes back again, talking about the Holy Father. Holy Father, now why would he say Holy Father? Because he's identifying a, a divine work, isn't he? Which we're joined to him by. A divine work which you're joined to him by. Keep through your own name those uh, those whom you have given me, over here, okay, that they may be one, over here, even as we are, <clears throat> one house, one mouth. We're going, uh, we're going to find God. This is what the church is being restored to, okay, of one knowledge, one altar, one temple, okay, and in one mouth we're glorifying God. Okay, the Apostle Paul brings that out also, doesn't he? Okay, in First Corinthians. Okay, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, okay, which um, let's just turn over there real quickly here okay, as I get ready to close. Okay. <clears throat> now look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Okay, this is the intended goal of the work of the Spirit. Okay, and uh, we can see, and we'll start with verse 8 here. Who shall also confirm you to the end, that's for this joy, that they may be blameless in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, that which we are receiving on this den over here. Okay, in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, Lord Jesus Christ, told us that, that which we're receiving for the purpose of this journey to be completed. The joy is complete. The cycle that's completed is his joy. Okay. Who shall also confirm you to the end that you may, that you may be, be blameless in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. How would this be possible? Look at verse nine. God is faithful. Um, by whom you are called to the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Now look what he says in verse 10. 
Now I be, now that God is faithful, now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing. This is why I brought out earlier. That you all speak the same thing, that there be no divisions among you. That there is not separate altars, and there is not separate houses. There is one house and one altar, even as there is one priesthood. And this is what um, uh, the Apostle Paul brings out in Ephesians, doesn't he? Concerning there's one, 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 there's one in God, one God and Father of law who is above all, in you all, and through you all. Okay, joined together. We're now joined together by the Spirit in the same mind, which means we're consenting to one doctrine, not all, not all kinds of other ideas. One doctrine. Okay, in the same judgment, which has to do with that, that the, the Spirit entering into this knowledge gives us all one perception. And not numerous, not numerous types of perceptions. Okay, now we're not trying to weigh all kinds of um, okay, uh, different philosophies. We're not trying to incorporate all different philosophies of the hydra, of the beast, which I brought out earlier. The hydra, the beast, has many different philosophies, has many different heads. Okay, but the Lamb of God has one head, and that's Himself. That's His government. Okay, He is the vehicle, okay, and the vessel of our salvation that's going to bring us back to the bosom of the Father. Okay? In order for this to take place, we all must all partake of that one bread. And in conclusion, this is what Jesus did when he said, eat of me and drink of me. When he took, when he took the bread and broke it and he says, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Okay? I have provided this, <clears throat> this substance as a token of the, the true knowledge and, uh, and sustaining, sustaining word. As the, as the work of the field sustain the flesh, so the labor of your faith will sustain your faith, will sustain you. The labor of this knowledge will sustain you. And then he took the cup and told him to drink it. He was identifying with one vessel himself. Okay? And those that identify with that one vessel will be saved. Okay? At this time, I'm going to pass the mic over to, that, to the individuals to be offering the sacrifices, and then I'll be closing.